Okay, everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I can fly a drone in deionized water. So I've got a little Propel drone here. It's a pretty cool little drone. You can do tricks with it like this. <laughs> but what I'm going to be trying to do with it today is to actually put it in deionized water. And hopefully the deionized water will have such a low resistance that it won't short circuit any of the internal circuitry and it will still be able to fly, but it will be in water. Now I've shown in many of my other videos, including the one where I made the internet go through water, that electricity can flow through water. But the key is, is that that water has to have ions in it. If it doesn't have any ions in it, then water is actually a good insulator and not a conductor at all. Okay, so let me explain why water itself is not a good conductor. So let's say that we have a voltage source here and we just have an anode and a cathode in the water. So for example, let's say we just have a battery and we're sticking both ends of the battery in the water. So why won't electrons flow from one side to the other? Well, for starters, free electrons cannot flow in a liquid. The only reason they can flow through metal free electrons is because the electron orbitals in metal are all overlapping. And so the electrons can just jump from one orbital to the next. And so water and other non-metals can't have electrons just flow right through it. So the other way to have electricity flow through water is just to have ions move from one side to the other. So in normal water, it's not just all H2O molecules, but there's actually an equilibrium between H plus ions and OH negative ions. There's just a tiny amount though. So in water with a pH of seven, that means there's 10 to the negative seven moles per liter of H plus ions and OH negative ions. So even though there's a tiny amount of them, there still is ions in pure water. So why can't electricity flow through pure water if we have these ions present? Well, let me show you what happens when you try to do it. So if electrons are flowing this way, so the electrons we wanna flow in a loop like this. If we just had a metal connection like this spoon here, then the electrons could come down the wire and then just travel across the spoon and go to the other side. So we could close our loop. But because we just have ions in the water now, the ions have to try to do it. So on this side, let's say the electrons come down into the wire in the water, then this reaction would happen. So on this side, we would get four H plus ions plus four electrons, and they form hydrogen gas. And then on this side, it's taking electrons from the water, so it takes it from the OH negative ions and turns them into water and oxygen, and it gives off these four electrons. So the four electrons can get passed to this side. So it's this continual loop. But the problem is to keep this loop going, we have to have something transfer across here. So now let's say this kept going. So it took four electrons from the OH negative ions on this side and it put them on this side and made hydrogen gas and on this side it made oxygen. So you'd end up with a surplus of H plus ions on this side because you took away the OH negative ions around them. And now on this side, you have this surplus of OH negative ions because you're adding electrons to the H plus ions and making hydrogen gas. So almost immediately when you turn on your battery and turn on this circuit, there's a tiny bit of electrons that flow, but basically no current flows through here until it already builds up this charge around it so that no more electrons can flow because it used up everything that was around the electrodes. Now eventually these H plus ions, because they're repelled now from this electrode, they're gonna make their way over here and they're going to react on this side. And eventually these OH negative ions are gonna make their way over here and react at this electrode. But because there's not very many of them, this process is actually pretty slow. So somehow we need to get more H plus and OH negative ions in the water. One way you can do that is by adding salt. So when you put salt in water, you have Na plus and Cl minus. And so now that you add these to the water, the Cl minus ions can come over here and they neutralize these H plus ions. And because you're neutralizing the H plus ions, we're taking away some of the product that actually pushes the equilibrium to produce more of the products. And so it keeps producing more and more of these products. So it makes more OH and H plus ions. And so now we have more OH ions to react with this electrode. And so it increases the rate of the reaction because we have more ions of water to react with. And the same thing happens on this side over here. The Na plus ions neutralize these OH negative ions over here. And so overall, you have H plus ions migrating this way 
and you have OH negative ions migrating this way. And what the NaCl did is kind of push the equilibrium of water to produce more of these H plus and OH negative ions so that the reaction can happen even faster and they can move across and react and make oxygen over here and hydrogen over here. And this bubbles out of solution. And to complicate things even more, these Cl minus ions can also react here and they can produce chlorine gas. So if you didn't follow very well what I was saying about water, just remember this, that pure water acts like an insulator instead of a conductor because it doesn't have enough ions in it. And so it can't carry a lot of current from one electrode to the other electrode. And so you basically can't complete the circuit. You have an open circuit. So even in regular tap water that we call pure water sometimes actually isn't that pure at all. Even bottled water, all these waters that we drink have ions in them already. And so they actually can still conduct electricity because these ha they have these magnesium, calcium, sodium, and all these other types of metal ions in them. And so if you just use regular tap water, you still won't see how much of an insulator pure water is. So what I'm going to be trying to do today is using pure water and I'm going to put my drone in the water. You can see that the circuitry of the drone is exposed here. It's just under the battery, so it's not waterproof at all. So if I put this in normal water, what would happen is the water would just short circuit the terminal of the battery here. And also on the internal circuitry here, you can see that everything is just soldered to the bottom here. And so all of those circuits would also short circuit. And so you wouldn't be able to deliver any power to your motors here. But what I'm going to be using is called type two deionized water. And basically it's pure water that has very, very little ions in it. Okay, so I'm gonna pour this in here. So this is regular tap water here. Let's check the resistance of this. So that's around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 mega ohms per centimeter. Now let's see what they are in the DI water. Put it about a centimeter away. 7 mega ohms. So this water here is around 10 times more insulative than regular tap water. Okay, now let's try to land it in our water and see if it still works. Okay, three, two, one. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> So immediately when it touched the water, it stopped. Let's see if this works still. Hey, it works. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, it's crazy though. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> So it still works, but it wouldn't work in the water for some reason. Let's try it like this. So it's just slightly spinning right now. Hey, it's working. <laughs> hey, it's working, look at that. It's working in the DI water. It just can't spin very fast, so it turns off. Whoa! Oh, but it keeps acting crazy when it comes out. So it's throwing off its gyroscope and accelerometer in there, but it still worked in the DI water. That's amazing. I thought for sure it would short circuit in there. You can see the circuits just right there, open, open up to the atmosphere. These were in the water and it was still working. And the battery, here's the terminal to the battery. The battery is wet. See in the wires, the wires to the motors are just exposed right there. All of this was completely in the water and it was still working. Okay, so this totally worked. I actually wasn't expecting it to work because I tried to wipe it off a little bit, but inevitably it still had some impurities on it. 
And so I thought that when I put it in the DI water, it would dissolve enough ions in it so that it would no longer be insulative, but it would be conductive and it would just short circuit everything and the drone would die. And I thought that's what happened right immediately when it went in. But what I think is happening is it automatically turns off when it feels a resistance on it. And so I think it thought that it ran into something. And so basically, because it couldn't spin its propellers, it thought that it should just turn off. So I think that's why it shut off right when I dropped it in the water. But I was able to start it up again and get the propellers to spin. And I'd like to thank No Labs for sponsoring this video. Now No Labs is a really cool company. What they've developed is a real-time blood glucose monitoring system. And how it does it is you wear a band on your hand and instead of pricking your finger and testing your blood to know the blood glucose level, what it does is it uses radio frequencies and see what's, what gets absorbed and what gets reflected back and it analyzes that data to see what your real-time blood glucose level is. Now this is a game changer for blood glucose monitoring. I'll put a link in my description where you can go check out their website and also go check out their YouTube channel to learn a little bit more about their product. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit that subscribe button and remember to hit the bell if you haven't hit the bell yet and you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And head over to theactionlab.com and you can check out the Action Lab subscription box. Now this is a really cool subscription box where I send you experiments similar to the ones that you see me do on my channel and you can do them at home. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.